bloats all their business endeavors. He's helps like, them with listen, houses, personal loans. Okay, okay so uh, I looked into this a little bit. So we're going to get into one of the more famous cousins of his in a bit. This cousin, one of the brothers, I think there's Carrie and there's and, and there's oh shit, I can't remember his first name. One of the cousins, anyways, he's actually since been deceased. This cousin, R.I.P. Addicted to crack. Like, not living a good life, a, you know, unfortunate life as somebody who lost their parents young. There's a lot of trauma there. He probably looked at different mm-hmm. ways to deal with that trauma. Got into drugs. He ends up, he ends up getting uh, accused of murder and goes to trial. And Barry puts up a, a fucking uh, 100000 to bail him out, pays all his legal no expenses, gives him a job, gives him a house. And then, unfortunately, this cousin ends up overdosing and dying, like, you know, within weeks after of getting, like, Barry posted his bail. I, I, I think before the time of his death, he had, you know, between loans and purchases, had given something in the excess of $15 million to those cousins. The in, four cousins, yeah. The, the family, four cousins, yeah. right? So it's yeah. like he, he, he looked after his family. This was a family man, right? Like I mean, he was... He, yeah, guy, he does look after family. There's no... There's... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's look nothing, the family, nothing stronger right? than family. Well, yeah, they, you know, the guy, he, he's got a heart of gold, right? Like, Let's stick in the water. Who would want to hurt this man? Right? Unless he was right. an absolute piece of shit. Was he a philanthropist or a shyster? Right? Well, that's... Or just a great businessman. Yeah. You be the judge. Let's get into it. Let's get into the, let's get into the shadiness here, boys. Because after his death... I mean, usually when someone dies, like a lot of stuff comes tumbling out. So after his death, through as many companies he controlled, he made large donations to several of the foundations he had set up in the Apotex name. And under Canadian tax law, pretty much what you can put into those companies as charitable donations, you can get back in tax credits. So it really just wipes yeah, it clean. It's like like you're, it's a, you're not it's a, doing jack or shit. You're, you're, right? you're not because then you can loan because you can loan back out against that company because they made this donation, so it looks good on paper, but in the end, did it really do? Yeah, much? it's it's more beneficial for you. Literally, everything that this guy does is fucking calculated. Hundred percent. He he's playing four D chess, and people you don't see it. You just see these big. Oh wow, he's donating this and he's doing wow. this. Well, everything this guy does, he has ulterior motives. Everything, right? Everything. So we're he, not- donates mil- he, he donates millions of dollars, which writes off that tax off his corporations he owns. And then he like borrows back from his own businesses as like a piggy bank. <laughs> it's, it's, it's genius. Yeah. It's fucking it's genius. It's shady, but it's he, genius. Yeah, he loans himself back the money that he's... So he's just... There's three parts. He's he's wrote he's, he's written it donated, off. He's written it off. Got a tax credit, and then he takes the money that's been donated and he loans it back to himself. And it's totally legal. <laughs> totally legal. Well, it's not himself because it's his corporations. Yep. That's where the that's where the law gets so pretty wild. But that's it, right? Hey, boys, boys, that's it. He doesn't do anything else shady, right? No. Well, at a, at a no, single nothing, time, no, he had all. almost a racked a total like loan amount of in excess of six million dollars, which. By all accounts, by CRA and everything is like they're like that's insane to do this. Yeah, not, that's a lot. Not illegal. That's a just lot. Just a little questionable. Just not many people have the funds to be able to loan that much back to themselves after donating millions of dollars. I think it's uh, few and far between. Right. So those ch- those you instantly start to question these charitable donations because he was he was using them for his own means. Right? But if, so like, listen. If, if you, but like honestly, so we got that. But if you, let's say you ask, let's let's ask professionals that are in the same industry with them, or like intellectuals working in universities, they would have nothing but good things to say about this, you know, upstanding pillar of society they philanthropist, right? They fucking hated him, despised him, right? It's quoted as him being called a deplorable human being by Amir Adaran, who is. Uh, he's he's pretty much practices law at the University of Ottawa, and he claims I couldn't verify this because I've never really used generic drugs. I never ha- not yet at least. But he claims that Canadians actually pay all some use. of the highest prices, highest prices in the world for generic drugs, and he is just gouging Canadians 
actually. Well, he had a monopoly the f- on the generic drug system, right? So he was just using it to enrich himself. And meanwhile, he's going like, Wah, these big guys are hurting Canadians, and I'm here for them. And meanwhile, he's fucking, in the other hand, just gouging the Canadians, sick Canadians, who were looking for cheap generic drugs that they probably could have got cheaper elsewhere. Well, yeah, because, I mean, so he, his drugs were cheaper, but he was making much more of a profit per pill than Big Pharma was yes. making. So if Big Pharma, let's, let's, say, let's say Big Pharma is selling a pill for 10 bucks, it costs him, I don't know, let's say $7 to whatever to create it. He's selling it for eight, but it costs him three. Yeah. Well, and so you're like, yeah, you're getting, you're getting a deal, but he's also making a fortune. His margins and, and, are way more than Big Pharma. Way well, better. And also, think about the fact that Big Pharma, think about the money that Big Pharma p- p- sets into like research and development and shit like that. And then yeah. Buddy's just fucking yeah. ripping off the recipe and fucking reselling it. Yeah, all those, right? like a lot like, of these legal battles were from these drug companies basically accusing him they're like you're stealing our patents right at at one time there's a fucking wild story of one of barry sherman's top executives with apotex was actually sleeping with a high-ranking member of bayer bayer and Hmm. they were having an affair (laughs) bayer aspirin and all that type of shit right yeah big time big pharma big big, pharma yeah big and somehow through this affair the employee for Barry Sherman ended up with 1,500 uh, pages of documents with patents and, like, basically their secret sauce. He got the Colonel's recipes, babies. Like, Absolutely. if you're telling me that was a plant, that guy did that to get those for Barry, right? He's prostituting for patents, bud. Right? And then, and then yeah. ba- like, Bayer and Bayer, they have no choice but to then, they, like— Something shady's happened. He's got the, you know, he's got the the twelve herbs and spices, and <laughs> and now their their only option is to, you know, sue Barry to try to prove that, right? That they and he's great and, at legal yeah, battles. And he's winning. And he's you imagine how infuriating that dude, would be. Dude, at one time he had a hundred legal battles going on at one time. Oh, a hundred? No, no, no. At the time of his death, he had upwards of twelve hundred open. Yeah, twelve hundred. Jesus, how do you? I, I can't. That's insane. Well, we're gonna get into why he's getting he's it's suing and why he's getting sued because Barry maybe just didn't always just practice and you know what he didn't have all his money in in fucking the pharmaceutical business, did he? No, it's uh, it, well, the one thing you know before before we move on to that, I'm re- fucking giggling here. I can't help. I it. really want to just quickly <laughs> say that like he he also kind of. You know, he, he, by all accounts, was like, hey, listen, Big Pharma fucking hates me. They hate me. They hate what I'm doing. He has to, um, yeah. He's like, you know, why why don't they just hire someone to kill me? He's like, they could get Thousand someone bucks. to knock me off. Thousand bucks. He's like, in the hands of the right person, I'm sure they could have me killed. And he, he, Thousand he said, bucks, he said, bingo, bango, bongo, body, they gonzo. Have, they have private investigators uh, basically tailing him at all times. Right, tailing him and tailing his employees. They sit in the parking lot and they watch, and they're they're all the time, and rightfully so. I mean, if you start stealing trade secrets and and profiting, it's, it's alleged that at one time, and this is obviously denied wholeheartedly by Bayer Bear, but there is an alleged scheme because he had fucking pissed off um, top executives at Bayer Bear that they were trying to plant. Uh, either child pornography on one of a, a laptop and put it in his office and then call the authorities or or the nose beers or yeah put an unseen amount of drugs in his car and then call the authorities when he was driving yeah, cocaine right that these, these were alleged plot because they were just like well he's he's doing underhanded tactics against us so we're gonna fight fire with fire here right like and, you know, obviously everyone wholeheartedly, well, oh, we would never do that for an upstanding company. Uh, for sure. We would we would certainly not plant kitty porn or cocaine, and we definitely wouldn't have anybody fucking murdered. Well, and that's the thing is, like, no, as we not. started talking here, you're talking about these big farm and generic, all of a sudden we start, like, what you start hearing now, you're like, sounds a lot like organized crime, sounds like kind of like, you know, mob ties. You're like, what the fuck is going on here? And then when you dive deeper into Barry, you're like... 
Yeah, this guy's got more shady businesses going on. Oh, yeah. He's got more well, fucking shady businessmen. He wasn't just dealing with pharmaceuticals, right? That was his main moneymaker, but that's not all he did. That's not all he did. He also put money into yacht chartering, a yacht chartering company, which turned out to be a shell corp, right? So, I mean. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you wanna watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys, enjoy the next video.